Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to part 1B. Now, we were asked to show that the limit of f of x, and where is my professor stick? Oh, I just keep forgetting that. All right, Ralph, Maria, Linda, Sue, Bob, George, I'm ready. I got my power back. Oh, I'm so sorry I get caught up. All right, now we were asked to prove that the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity if and only if the limit of f of 1 over y as y approaches 0 from the left is equal to L. Well, a little diagram helps us to kind of understand and remember. I discussed the vastness of space. Remember, this arrow means that this line is traveling. Just imagine it's traveling through the vastness of space. It's just continuing to travel and go on and go on throughout all eternity. It's still going. Because we don't know where the end of space is. We don't even know if space has an end. So this line is going on and on and on and on and on and on and on forever. Close your mind and think about that. The vastness of space. It's going on forever. Well, we're asked to show that this is true if that is true. So we need to show that this is true. So... Here's the next step that we're going to make. First, we're going to have to assume that this statement is true. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to assume, assume that the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity, that this is indeed equal to L. We're going to assume that this is true. And remember, we're looking at how close can we get to that line depending on the tolerance that we choose. We could say, let there be 50 trillion trillion zeros at the end of the decimal and then a 1. If I pick this value that meets that specification, then because we don't know what negative infinity is, where that ends, I'm saying that I can find another value that's a little bit bigger than this so that when I substitute that into the formula, into the function, calculate it where that point is, and then I determine the distance between that point and the horizontal asymptote, that the difference between those two will be smaller than the 15 trillion trillion zeros after the decimal followed by the 1, that I can indeed find a number that when I put it into the function, calculate where that point is and determine the distance between the point on this function and that line that that distance is going to be smaller than the epsilon that I chose. So here's the next statement. For each epsilon greater than zero we can find a capital X greater, less than, I'm oh sorry, whoa, now it's less than zero, such that there exists There exists an, an X, which is less than that capital X, and which is less than zero. And that the absolute value of F of X minus L is going to be less than epsilon. So whatever value of x that I choose here to put into that function, if it's equal to epsilon, the distance between this function and that horizontal asymptote, then what I'm saying is, well, I can get an x value on that line. I can still find a value in that line that's less than that. 
so that when I put it to the function, calculate the location of that point on this function, and determine the distance at that point from that asymptote, the distance between that asymptote and this point on that line is going to be less than that given epsilon. So thereby proving that no matter what you choose, I can choose something that's a little bit smaller that's going to get me even closer to that line. So therefore, I'm getting closer to showing that this line is indeed the limit of that function. So what do you think we're going to do now? Based on what I did in part A, uh, Ralph and George collaborate. Sue and Maria collaborate. What do you think I'm going to do now based on part A? You think about it. What do you think I'm going to do now based on what I did in part A? Following the similar steps of part A, what do you think I'm going to do? Let me move out of the way and give you an opportunity to think that over. Hmm. So what is the next step that I'm going to take? All right, well, let's take a look. The next step is, here's what I'm going to say. Let x equal 1 over y. That is the next thing I'm going to say. Now, by, there goes our great concept again, by substitution, by substitution, we have, we have the following. So, so far, by substituting that in, we have the following. Here is what we have. One, that the absolute value of f of 1 over y minus l is going to be less than epsilon. So I can find an x that's also going to be less than epsilon. And then I can find another value of this that's going to be even smaller than that. And two, by substitution, I know that 1 over y, that's replacing the x over here, is less than capital bar x. which is less than zero. So that's by substitution. So by substitution we have these two results so far. Now based on what I did on part A, Ralph, what do you think I'm going to do now? Look this over. Tell me what do you think is going to be the next process in moving closer to proving that statement. What do you think, Ralph? Uh, yeah, I do see that. Good reasoning. Very good. Did you hear what Ralph said? Do you agree with his statement? What did I do in part A? Think about what do you think I'm going to do now to move closer to that. What was that? Yeah, you're right. Let's take a look. You ready? Are you sure? Let's take a look. Well, here's what I'm going to say. Multiply, multiply the inequality, multiply the inequality by y over capital X. So that is the next step that I'm going to do. So let me show that. So I have Y over that capital X and I'm going to multiply this times that inequality. So here I have 1 over Y which is less than capital X, which is less than zero, 
And now, that is going to give me all the X, the Y's cancel. That leaves me with 1 over capital X, which is less than Y. When I multiply these, the X's cancel. That leaves me with Y. And 0 times anything is just 0. So here, this is just a use of algebra. So class, what I'm going to ask you to do, and I'm going to ask you to do the same thing, is to please copy this work that I have shown here so far. Are there any questions as the steps that I've taken here so far? Anyone? So it's been good so far. Has this been good for you so far? Have I done a good job of taking you through this step by step and communicating with you and getting you to think about the reasoning and looking at the logical process and also looking at the abstract point of view of this line going through the vastness of space. What I'm going to ask you to do now is to pause your video. Please copy this because I'm going to need to erase some of this so we can continue on and move closer to proving this statement. I shall return. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we now have the board cleared. We're going to move on to the next step. Now, based on what I did in part A, what do you think I'm going to do next? What was the next line of reasoning that I did? What was the next step that I did? Let me see, Suzanne. Very good. Excellent, Suzanne. Very good. Very good recall. Did you hear what Suzanne said? Did you recall the same thing? What is the next thing I'm going to do? What? Yes, exactly. Very good. Here's the next step. Well, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to say, well, let delta equal 1 over x. Well, then we have, here's what we have. We have delta, in this case, it is less than y, which is less than 0. Let's take a look at this on our number line. Well, here goes 0. Here goes y, and here goes delta. Now, based on what I did in part A, what tool am I going to use now? What tool am I going to need to move closer to proving this? And realize again that all of this is moving this way towards the zero from the negative side. So what tool am I going to use? George. Oh, sorry. I want to take a look at that, right? Okay. Yes. Yes, exactly. I'm going to use the same tool. What tool did George say that he's going to use? Do you remember the tool? Incidentally, it's the theorem. That's the tool we're going to use. What theorem am I going to apply to this? What was that? Yes. Very good. Excellent. Excellent recall. Yes. Well, the next step is we will use the squeeze theorem. That is the next step that we're going to use. Very good. Well, here's what we're going to say. By the squeeze theorem. By the squeeze theorem. As delta 
approaches zero from the left. But well, lo and behold, ha ha, y is also approaching zero from the left. Isn't that what we want to show? Holy gee willikers, Walter Cronkite. Ha ha ha. We're there. I'll be right back. I just want to race this so we can wrap this up like a present for Christmas. I'll be right back. I'm back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are there. We are at the step that we wanted to show. So, here's what has just happened. We have just proved that the limit of f of f, f of 1 over y, as y approaches 0 from the left is equal to L. And by that, we now know that the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity is equal to L. So that is what we wanted to show. That this was on condition of that being true. Are there any other questions? Because now notice, again, come back here. As this is approaching zero, this is from the negative side. So as this is getting smaller, there's smaller negative numbers. So as the numbers in the bottom get smaller, because remember, in this case, that as x is approaching negative infinity, this is a, a very large negative number. And when I divide by a very large negative number, this gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So therefore, y is approaching 0, but then 1 over y becomes, you got it, negative infinity. So in this case, as y approaches 0, f of 1 over y approaches L, which is what we wanted to show. Ladies and gentlemen, this wraps up this part of the proof. If there are any questions, please let me know. Either email me or call me, and I will gladly discuss this problem as well that is on my website. I hope that my instruction has been clear, that it has been at a good pace, and that I've helped you to expand your thinking just a little bit. So at this point, if you have not copied this work, class, if you have not copied this work, please do so. My visiting student, please pause your video. Please copy all of this work. Go back and rewind the video. Review it. Get a cup of cocoa, just like Professor Keats told me to do. Take it in. Take your time. Expand your mind. Close your eyes. See this line traveling through the vastness of space. See these two values that have the same magnetic poles repelling each other. They're like two rings on this infinite line. As I continue to push these, this, this ring, it pushes on this, and it's continuing to travel through the vastness of space. And think of this as being just a nanometer away from this, just a nanometer. And, but because they have the same poles, they're repelling each other. So as I push on X going towards negative infinity, trying to find that, this is always in front of it. And it's just continuing to travel through the vastness of space for eternity, ever, 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 ever. Thank you for joining me. Please pause the video. Please copy your work. See you next time.